It seems like I gotta stick my DNA in the ground so Mother Earth can spring more real niggas around. Yeah, trifling niggas. That's why I'm waiting on the sky to open up in that trumpet to sign. Yes, T.I., you my dog, but I'm waiting on the real king to come down, spoken that crown. That's why I need to get my soul right when he come back in town. Yes, rise with him and disappear in the clouds. Lord knows that'll make my cousin Sheila proud. Lord, only if I can get a glimpse of that gap in her smile. But yes, here I stand, trying to stand like a righteous man. But here come the devil asking me for another dance, trying to rearrange plans, put my mind back in another, another land. But I tell him it ain't happening, you understand? Yes, I'm ready to go to that land that would never be destroyed by man. Yes, the promised land. You folks don't understand. My life was like walking through the wilderness blind and cooling my feet off in desert sand. Yes, I definitely had to put God in the plan. My fellow brothers, it's time to take a stand. Yes, a million man march again. You hopping Bob. Yes, sir, boss ass niggas don't see what's happening. Yes, us niggas dying by the masses. The word genocide, how many times you hear that in your classes? Those so-called Jews talk about the German Nazis. But how about 400 years of U.S. property? Yeah, them crackers got a nerve to have a law called robbery. That's why God is my only authority. Yeah, somebody free Mac or bring Tupac back. How about bring back real rap? God forgive me for my contribution to crack, selling my soul for a few stacks. Yes, how I was living was a soon to be tragedy. That's why I came up with a comprehensive strategy. That's why niggas see me barely. Yes, what I put on my paper was my therapy. I remember times I was sent to the real in the back passenger seat trying to steal. Dealt with all my problems through weed and bill. Yes, crying out tears, wishing my pops was healed. Yes, those blessed nights, those bullets grazed my ears. It felt like somebody was flicking me with their nails. When I was going through this, everybody I just stood up and cheered. Boy, I got a hell of a story to tell. That's the day I became shell. When my brother Black Boy didn't make bail. Yes, when that white devil had my daddy looking frail. Yes, I'm giving you those days when this dark skinned nigga was looking pale. All right, this is Sam C Productions interviewing One Dog. How did you get the name One Dog? Did you come up with yourself or was it given to you? Uh, my name was given to me. And shout out to my homeboy KP. I don't think you'd be cool out there if you give yourself a nickname. But my name originally Red Dog, got it from Rich Dog, but it sounded like people saying Red Dog. So, it, you know, it stuck with me through the years. Then I got into the music. Then they already had a rapper in it. That's a pioneer, I let no hip hop name Red Dog. So I had thought about it, sat back and came, you know, with something I like, man. My favorite number is one. That's a powerful, strong, independent leadership number. So. I said, man, I'm put it together and made one dog. All right, you see, when you got into the music, who are you affiliated with? Uh, my brother's uh, music group is Hood Legends. Um, Righteous Warfare, that's my movement, what I'm, I'm doing. Um, Conscious Minds Records, I'm affiliated with. That's a lady. Okay, you said the, the number one's your favorite number and it's a powerful, powerful number. So is that meaning you stand alone, or how is that associated in what you're doing? <clears throat> oh yeah, you gotta be a leader, you know. Um, yeah, you gotta be prepared to stand alone through whatever you're doing in your movement. And one thing by being a big believer in Jesus Christ, and one day when you leave this earth, you know, you might gotta end up standing alone at the end of the day. So you know that number one that means more to me than anything. Having that number one before dog, you know, dog was a part of my life growing up. You know, with my homeboys and different things like that. But that one part is, you know, that next level in my life and trying to become, you know, that man to, to lead the people. So is that what made you did um, start doing spoken word? Um, yeah, my inspiration, yeah, to lead the people. You know, um, I started just because, you know. It was a situation in my life I was going through hard times, you know, and it, um, then, you know, it helped me out when I found, you know, my brother used to write home and he started writing poetry and I never knew my brother thought like that, you know, put words together like that and I, you know, I was going through hard times as well and my brother was like, well, this helped me go through my, get through my time. So I was like, man, let me try it out. So I sat there at the table, shoot. And drank on the natural ice and had a had a blunt rolled up, man, and that's how I started. I first my wrote my first poem on a napkin with a marker, and that's how I, ever since then. Then you know I started recording them on my phone. You know how to you know how you had the recordings on your phone. I start recording and then reciting it to myself and things like that. 
Then I took it to the neighborhood, you know, shout out to my brother Dread 56. He was sitting on the block right now, you know, Simon out, you know, I used to kick it, but he was like, bro, you need to do it and put music behind it. So, you know, that's how I started. And, you know, my inspiration is basically my brother and seeing that and you know and I always been a big follower of Malcolm X you know the Malcolm X's, the Martin Luther King's, the Marcus Garvey's, the Bob Marley's, the Tupac Shakur's, you know the Harriet Tubman's, you know the people that um, Hugh and Newton, you know the start of Black Panthers, you know there's always been an inspiration to me so when that so when I found myself in that then next thing you know everything started co coexisting with one another so that's why you get that that thoughtful, somewhat militant side of me. Well, you took it way back. What what about your life has made you take it that far? You said Huey Newton and <clears throat> Harriet Tubman's. What, well, you took it way back. What about them inspired you? Uh, they, you know, they was just, it took a strong person at that time to take a stand. Now we're able to really speak nowadays like we want to and move how we want to but nobody's able to take that stand but back then if they thought a certain way or even spoke a certain way that can cause you getting a hanging or beating or different things like that so i respect them people you know i gotta respect them for for who they are and what they was trying to do and one of the big leaders to me in our time and the day where we all witnessed it was there's a parcel prophet and me was two parts of course and what he stood for, and you know, and you know, he showed his imperfections just like any other man. No man out here is perfect, but he stood for something much more bigger than than a lot of the media tried to portray him to be. You know, um, he was a he was a special young man to me. So I'm definitely that's a dude that I really follow, mostly because I was able to to witness that in my lifetime. You said. Um Tupac Shakur, but he, you said the way the media portray him, you mean at the violence side of him? Yeah, they portray him to be ignorant, spitting on the cameraman, but they didn't, they didn't portray him to be a man of a freedom fighter. All he was was fighting for equality and for the oppressors, not only for his people, but all people. Um, and he stood for something, I think, you know, and what goes with that is hip hop is the only only form of music that touched worldwide you know and and god god i thank god definitely had his hand in hip-hop because there wouldn't be no other way for a ghetto child words to be heard through the world they wouldn't even know this was going on in america they wouldn't even know you know america put it out they're like yeah we're the richest country but they wouldn't know it's that much poverty that goes on in in the world you know and and tupac exposed it in many ways you know and um you know, a lot of our entertainers today, all they doing, they teach, they speak on part, they took part swagger, but they ain't, none of them are standing up for what part stood for. So I want to be those ones that part planted that seed. I want to, you know, put some water on there to help that tree to grow. Are you speaking in terms of the the bling and the nice cars and <laughs> that? type for the from the entertainers of no, today? I don't, have, I don't have no problem with a man wanting to obtain nice things. There's nothing wrong with that. But when it comes to a point where your whole world exists off materials, that's the problem. You know, I don't, you know what I'm saying? You can't, that's what we would call worshiping the eye of God. You had a point in it when Moses led his people through the wilderness and, and God brought them through so much. The next thing you know, they see him down there worshiping a golden calf. That's what all our entertainers are doing, worshiping the material, selling their soul to obtain something in life. You know, what is it for a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? You know what I'm saying? That's all we doing. And that's what they're teaching these kids to do. And they brainwashing them and, and it's a messed up generation. I think if Park was still here, a lot of this wouldn't be going on today. So that's why I feel like, you know, and like I say, hip hop is, you know, it's a way it's a form of music that, that's supposed to be given to uprise our people, uprise everybody. At the same time, have a good time with it. But when you got people out here basically saying, it's all right to do this and it's all right to do that. And you know what I'm saying? Saying it, you know, just basically being reckless with their words, corrupt communication. And you know, 
that's what's going on. There's a bunch of corrupt communication going on out here nowadays. Now, I want to go back on something you just said about that if Pop was here, you don't think things things would be different. Don't you mean if, like, Martin Luther King or Malcolm X was here? Because the uh, way that he was portrayed, it I mean, you a person... It's, 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 I'm going to tell you, Malcolm X was, was for their time, and Martin Luther King, and that was in their time. At the 90s, in the 90s at that time, Pop was that leader, because that's what the times have turned to. Thug life was a leader? Thug life was a leader because people don't thug life is not a form of disrespect to anything. It was just a form of bringing all our ghetto kids together and let's do something and have a revolution and do and be positive thinkers and philosophers and guys like that. People took it a whole another way because hey, Michael met some Martin Luther King, yeah, that would have been great. But it's just like there's Jesse Jackson still here, they still are Al Sharpness, that's here, civil rights leader, but who the kids gonna pay attention to? Al Sharpness or Tupac Shakur? You know what I'm saying? Cause they know Tupac been through this. You know what I'm saying? But a man with a suit and tie wasn't gonna be able to be able to, to lead to help lead the people. And God know that. God works in mysterious ways sometimes man will never understand. Paul was a man that they seen, oh, he was a child out born in poverty. He went through this and went through that. He was born, you know, he didn't have a father. You know what I'm saying? Mother on crack. You know what I'm saying? So, who better to lead the people at that time when crack epidemic was heavy in the 90s, early 90s, mid 90s, and things was going on? And who else is better to lead the people? You know, ain't gonna be no man with a suit and tie at that time, I'll tell you that. Yeah, Tupac's mother was a Black Panther. Yeah. Do you have any affiliates with that? Yeah, my father was a Black Panther. He was a, he was a, you know, gangster, you know, turned Black Panther, then, you know, big leader of the community, even to this day. He's been coaching football and in our community for 30 years. So, you know, yeah, my father. That must have been interesting growing up with a father as a Black Panther. Nah, it was just, it was, it was a strength that was much needed, you know, because I, as a kid, I always thought, thought different, you know what I'm saying, and my father seen, he told me when I was born, he thought I was going to be special, you know what I'm saying, something different, so, you know, my father was basically, you know, he just taught me to think for myself, don't take what they tell you in these churches, or different things like that, and take it, take, you know, and, and sit there and take that as the truth. You find out the truth for yourself. It's you and your relationship with God. No man gonna tell you how to have your relationship with God. You know, that's how he basically taught me. And be proud of who you are. Because I needed that as a kid. You know, you grow up, you you know, you, you know, you don't have everything. You, you don't get respected the same way as you see white kids get respected. So I felt like, of course, you're gonna feel like you're inferior. But he made me be proud of who I was. And I respect him for that. To this day, yes, he, my father wasn't perfect, you know, he ended, you know, had drug problems and different things like that. But I respect him as a man for that, you know, and a lot of other kids in our community respect him as well. Hmm. <clears throat> All right. In this movement, what are you hoping to accomplish? Um, I'm praying that I, I accomplish all... Uh, even one person listening and taking heed to it, because that one person that takes heed to it, all it takes is one person to, to, to start off a movement, a leadership role, and it takes a bunch of people to follow that believe. But if there's one person that can take heed and be like, bro, you know, I'm behind you, then, you know, bro, a man, a woman, whoever, you know, it just, I'm just trying to teach kids, man, go out there and get the education, you know, go out there and and obtain some, be something in life, you know. Just, you know what I'm saying? Don't don't get caught up in the hype. I ain't telling you as a young man or whatever, you know what I'm saying, you in the household, you know, you got little brothers and sisters and your mom, mom on crack, or your mom probably sleeping around every night, or your father probably in prison, and you got you don't have no other way for them, the way to feed your family. I'm not telling you not to do what you got to do. I'm just telling you. It's these kids that's caught up in this trend out here that's, that got the whole game mixed up and they thinking that's really what it is. And What is this trend you're talking about? What the trend, trend of thinking selling dope being cool. Not, selling dope was a formal way of surviving at one point. Now it's, it's a cool way, it's a trend, it's a way of, 
You know what I'm saying? You got kids with both parents in the household, everything paid for, and they still decide to come out here in the streets. That's a problem. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of those kids out here because they feel like, oh, this girl might not like me because I ain't, I don't look cool. This girl might not like me because I'm educated. You know what I'm saying? And this is just a way of, you know, these kids, it's that form, it's that generation now. That's, and it's not their fault. It's, it's um, generations before then that didn't teach them, you know, their parents. And, and, you know, parents getting caught up in giving their kids all the material things that they didn't have, but they're not giving them what's best for them. That's the word of God. So what are your thoughts on this so-called generational curse? Uh, this you know, it's been that since the beginning of time. So, you know, it's the thoughts of what happened before this time. Not everything looking random, everything looking crazy, but it's always warning before disaster. So it's that it's that gap between now and our civil rights movement and those people that walked in those times. They you know, there's nobody coming to speak. All they saying, Oh, these kids don't understand. Now they don't understand. We don't. They don't teach us this in our school, you know what I'm saying? And our parents is, you know what I'm saying? A lot of our parents is not here. How these kids, so what you expect to happen? You know what I'm saying? It's been going ever since the beginning of the time, since before then, before slavery to slavery. This has been led to this, you know what I'm saying? This ain't just, these kids, oh, all of a sudden, everything goes around bumps and crazy. This, nah, it's been led to this, you know what I'm saying? To the point where, where we at today. Hmm. So that's everybody's fault. The elders to the ones, their parents, their parents, parents, parents. It's been led into this. They accept who we are, accept being inferior, accept, you know what I'm saying, to the point where, oh, you know, we fought for things, civil rights movement, but more, what, 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 honestly, what I got out of that, yo, we can get certain jobs now, we can get certain education now. But what I seen out of that, we, we tried to attain everything that the white man had materially, instead of standing as a spiritual people, instead of staying in our neighborhoods and help building our neighborhood. Like you might go to places where Latinos, they got their own stores and you know, own everything in their neighborhood. Blacks don't do that. You know, they got everybody else coming to black neighborhoods and how and running stores, Asians and Arabs, you know what I'm saying? So if people don't think I'm telling the truth, come on, if you ain't from the hoods, you know who run your stores in your neighborhood. So we don't, we, so instead of trying to tell you what they have, we should have been building our own, you know what I'm saying? Making our own schools and, and educating our kids in our ghettos and, and, and building a future of, uh, of, of philosophers and thinkers and people that care about the communities. Now it's about, if I got it, Look at me why I got it. I don't care about you not having it, but look at me. I made it out, so I forget forget everybody else. Look at me. So that's a that's a generation of that, you know, to this of this day and age. I feel you on that, but do you think it's it's hard for us as a people <laughs> as as blacks to to stick together because a lot of those are Latinos and those Asian they they stick together they 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 hold it they have each other back regardless isn't it it, it seems to be like a blacks just can't do that no because it's been it's been that since slavery Willie Lynch somebody read up on Willie Lynch he taught us to hate one another he taught us to put the light skin in the house and darts and and how he treat the light skin a little bit better than the dogs and this and this and that What's up? So it's been that since slavery, inferior, you know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, now we can't stick together. Now, okay, give one more, a little bit more than the other. Why do you forget about the ones that are struggling? Do this, and man, it's all, it's been a plan. This ain't, like I say, this ain't something that's just new. There's nothing new under the sun. It's just the fact that uh, these things have led into the day. Now we hate ourselves. That's why, that's why we look at another brother. Like, you see, you walk, if I walk in the, if I walk in the, in a, in a, in a store, see another brother, he gonna mug me before he speak. He gonna look at me up and down before he speak. That's how we look at each other now, cause we hate each other, we hate, we hate ourselves, so how we gonna have love for somebody else? So that's something that was brought from slavery, but back then when they were doing that, it was the only reason they was keeping the lighter skinned slaves in the house because they were part of that master. So that was a way for them to keep them contained, but shouldn't that be something that's that done came out the minds of black people since we more 
we should be more knowledgeable now. Should be, you know what I'm saying? But it ain't because how are you gonna be knowledgeable if somebody ain't teaching you that? How are you gonna be knowledgeable if you if I see oh uh if if you go somewhere let's say we go somewhere if it's a dark skinned young lady walk in the store with a young lady that's light skinned who gonna get treated better? Who gonna get treated better than their classrooms? You know what I'm saying? It's just it's it's that it's different things that happen throughout time. It's still like that. You know what I'm saying? It's still like that. It's still women that, you know what I'm saying, that's dark skinned that uh, don't feel like they're beautiful. It's still, it's, it's that, you know, it's people that, it's, it's still that. You know what I'm saying? So, it, yeah, you're knowledgeable, so it should be like that, but it's not like that today. It's not. So, it's just the fact that we got to come together and understand that, but it's not willing. Like I say, now we obtain, we've been, been down for so long, then when somebody do obtain something, they forget who they are and where they come from. What do you mean they forget? Like they just, because they don't go back to their communities and uplift their communities. Yeah, of course they just you know they got it like oh they look at me. I'm the man, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm the woman, you know what I'm saying? No, just look at me. Look at me attitude, and they feel like they're accepted in the other. You know what I'm saying? Other world. So you sure that's the person, or it's the other people that's thinking that? Cause it was this, it's this song I've heard by Mary Mary <laughs> that people look at a person and see, ooh, they nice cars and they got a nice house and they got all this money in the bank or whatever. But you don't know what they're doing behind closed doors. They could be on their knees praying. You don't know what's going on when they get behind closed doors. So you sure it's not the the people the outside that's thinking you are a certain way. It can be both ways. It could be a person hating you for trying to attain those things. It's either way. It go either way. It's a yin and a So yang. basically, you are put in that category because you're trying to be a leader. You're trying to make well, start a, a revolution. It's a difference between a little leader and a person that obtaining something and forget where they come from. It's a difference. It's a big difference. We all know people out here that have gotten in and made it out of the neighborhood, but do they do anything for their communities? We all know somebody like that. Then you got some of them that that okay people people would hate them for you know you got the crab in the bucket mentality so it's a yin and a yang to the situation all i'm trying to do is just grab the ones that want to listen and learn and move on you know what i'm saying i'm not it's not it's not just about me it's not about that i'm not saying oh one day oh i'm not trying to attain anything but if i if i build if i build a 50 50 room mansion you best believe my folks stand with me. You know what I'm saying? My people stand with me. I'm doing this. I'm putting, I'm putting a community center in the in, in the in the community. Or I'm taking mm -hmm. kids and traveling them here, taking them there. Or I'm building, I'm doing something. Yeah, but constructive so did Hammer did the same thing and went bankrupt. Who? So Hammer. Man, that's 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 that's. I understand. I respect his heart and what he's doing. But it's by building. It. You can't help each each individual. That's what I'm saying. It's about you helping. All right. If you got a neighborhood where there's no libraries or there's nothing that can help, you know, you don't have you don't have the resources for these kids. Like when I was younger, you know, we had, you know, our programs where we had, you know what I'm saying? They people take you here, take you there, let you see something different. These kids don't have that. Where I'm from. And when the Park Recreation Center is gone now, you know what I'm saying? These kids don't have nothing to do but get in trouble. You know what I'm saying? So it's different things you can do to help. It's not about oh, grabbing each person and buying them a Mercedes and didn't know helping them. You know what I'm saying? Basically like, okay, if this dude know how to cut it out, I help you build your barbershop. We're going to do this what we're going to do. Then when it's time to put a, like a community day together or a job fair, I can ask you for your sponsorship. So we can put a job fair together for the kid or for the people that need jobs and build building your own economy within your community. That's how you help, not just by buying everybody and trying to, you know, because all that's going to do at the end of the day, you see, people going to leave your side when you ain't got it no more. But it's just by helping the ones that want to be helped. Mm. So your mentality is just, just trying to basically help out the community in the long run. Yeah, you know, basically build a build a build an empire. You know what I'm saying? Just like just like you have a, a just like you got a McDonald's out there, Coca Cola. It started believe me, it started as one little small place where the 
the idea started out in one little small room and it materialized to a franchise. That's what I'm talking about, Empire State of Mind. Cats now, nah, they just feel like they got a couple grand in their pocket and, and, and they able to, you know, do certain things that other people can't do at the time. They feel like they made it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you got the blood wilds, the people, the people that invented that not still living, but they generations are still eating off that. They still generating money and eating. They families don't have to work a day in their life. Kids don't have to pay for college. Everything paid for. Whoever in their family, they took care of. They taking care of for the rest of their life. It's by the empire state of mind. Just like in music, like if I have a record label and I sign four artists and I, and I front no money to start their own record label. And they start, they, and the people that they sign start their own record label. You know what I'm saying? Start building an empire. You know what I'm saying? And doing different things like that. It's by building an empire state of mind. And I respect Jay-Z when he said that. It's a mindset, you know what I'm saying? I don't respect everything that he do. And we, you know what I'm saying? But I respect that mindset though. We don't have that mindset, building an empire. But if we don't have any true leaders and people that want to help invest in kids, <clears throat> how do you expect them to get that state of mind when everything around them seems to be crumbling? Yeah, it's, or it's materialistic? Sad, man. It's sad, you know? It's very sad that we're in this state now. It's, it's, it's like that, you know what I'm saying? Then when we do have leaders, they, they're they leaders of destruction, not leaders to build, you know? It, it's sad, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's like that now, you know? That's why I pray that God, God help me reach the ones. Cause my fight, I already know when people hear my words, my fight only ain't with the oppressors, but it's gonna be people that look just like me. That's gonna be going against what I say as well, even though they know it's the truth. You know what I'm saying? So it's sad though, but I pray for the best. Hmm. All right. Well, how do you intend to like bring in people to understand and to hear you? To listen to your words too. Stuff like this that can introduce them to me. I appreciate you coming to want to interview me and we do what you know stuff like this so they can recognize me, you know. And you know, on um, music, you know, just going out there and being part of the people and showing them that I'm just like you. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a laid back dude that just enjoy life like everybody else, you know, it just I want better, for not only for myself and my family. You know, I got a little girl, so I want her to grow up in a in a better world. You know, but this this is already spoken about in the book of Revelations. They ain't mean that's how I had to go, but you know, but it's going like that. So these these times right here, it rough times. So you know, I just I'm just gonna keep working hard, keep speaking. No matter, I'm not doing it to, to be anybody's friend. But like I say, one day I'm prepared to stand alone as righteous warfare. So that's all I'm doing it for. It's not not trying to be no not cool with anybody or stuff like that. I ain't trying to be the most you no know, popularity contest. Just trying to be 100 with the people. So you're saying being real and being yourself in the end could cost you. Yeah, that's what it. Hey, that's what God called on you to do, and that's what it do. I go home with my father. I don't have nothing. To, there's nothing down here for me but to to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like pop, died in violence. You know what I'm saying? Michael Metz, Martin Luther King, and what did they do to, to deserve that? What did Jesus do to the, to deserve being crucified like that? You know, so that just comes with the territory when you speak that man's name. You know, I just, that's what, you know, my aunt told me when I was 12, I was going to be a leader of the people. You know, at that time, you know, I was want to be an NBA ball player, you know what I'm saying? So I wasn't, <laughs> so I wasn't listening to that, but, you know, she told me, you know, I was going to be, I was going to be special, a minister, you know, and one going to be like a traditional pulpit. So she told me that, she prophesied that to me when I was 12. So whatever comes to me, be honest with you, I've had visions and things to know, you know, I've been, you know, spoken to through the spirit that, you know, only got a certain amount of time to do this, you know, and, you know, put this together 
and understanding who I am and what I'm not here to do. Hmm. Do you think that it's becoming a trend? Being real is becoming a trend? Being real? Mm-hmm. What the word? People just using the word? Yes. Really? Oh, yeah. Of course. I'm the realest nigga you ever seen. <laughs> y'all know how y'all niggas do it. Y'all like them girls, man. I'm the realest nigga you ever seen. But first thing they do is pull money out their pocket. Oh. They real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Real is being real to who you are. Just like I was telling about the kids earlier. Just, you know, don't worry about trying to fall into a certain group. You know what I'm saying? Because let me tell you something. If a person don't love God, it's not prosper. They're going to love you. You know what I'm saying? A person not real with them, person not real with themselves, how they gonna be real with you? You know what I'm saying? But everybody, everybody, it seems like it's a world today that won't be lied to. They want, everybody wanna live that fantasy life. But real is, real is not being perfect. Real is being real to yourself, cause there's no such thing as being perfect. Or anything like that, it just, you know, there's only one man that walked this earth that can claim perfection, you know? It's just by keeping faith in God through everything that you're going through. You know what I'm saying? If you want to read something in the book of Job, that was one of the realest books in the Bible by the man that went through it all. Even his own wife told him to curse God. He said, nah. And God blessed him 10 times more than what he, you know, he wanted. He took everything from him and blessed him with more because he kept his faith. So that's all I'm saying. Just, that's keeping it real, keeping it real with God. Now keep it real with the next man, that's gonna get you prison or dead and gone. But your heart, your heart broke out here. Don't put your faith in man, you know what I'm saying? Trust in man. You know what I'm saying? I ain't saying don't trust no man, but don't put God, don't put man before God. Put God before man. That when God reveal who your true friends are. Watch how you speak about God, watch how your friends act about you after you do that. They want you to rip and run and do all the crazy stuff, get on pills, drink liquor, do all the dumb stuff, run around, you know, run around four, five deep in a car, smoking weed, run around, whoever driving ain't got no license, you know how y'all niggas running out there, you know, I never, <laughs> been, there. I never been there, so I ain't gonna talk about it. gonna get you in trouble. You know, you know what I'm saying? But, just, but when you start separating yourself from that, watch how your friends act towards you when you start separating yourself from that. They can lead you to destruction, but nobody want to lead you to the light. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. They want to lead you to the light, just their light. <laughs> yeah, their light, their light is, is them, though. It's them, very them. <clears throat> All right. All right, in conclusion of this interview, is there, what is the base message you want to get out to the people? What is that you want them to understand and get from you on, a, on another level? I want them to understand, like, man, look at it. It's, it's real life, you know. Don't be looking be for the preacher man to save you. You know what I'm saying? Look for the real person that, that's why I say Paul was a prophet because he was in the streets. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a real servant of God. A servant of God, not just coming to your neighborhood on Sunday mornings and praying on the week. You know what I'm saying? What about your, what about your light bill? What about your rent? You know what I'm saying? What about, you know what I'm saying, kids need school clothes and different things like that. That's how many of them that's going to be there. You know what I'm saying? Trust in yourself and when your relationship with God. My album called Come As You Are. Come As You Are to God. Just like me, oh yeah, I sit back and smoke a black and have a bill too. That's just me as a man. It's things that I'm working on as a man. I'm just letting you know that because I'm not perfect. So I'm sitting here, oh, bro, think he perfect or this? No, I'm telling you my imperfections as well. But things that I'm working on, because I know God is working on me because I'm nowhere near who I was four or five years ago. I'm nowhere near before then who I was. I always believed that was a God, but at one point in my life, I started doubting that. But God made it for real that he exists in my life because I'm still here. So it's just about the fact of, you know, just trusting you and your relationship with God. And you making a way, get your education, man. You know what I'm saying? Make a way for yourself and your family where you can be here for time to come. Because don't think because you, you out here getting money right now and, you know, it's going to last forever. It's not. You know what I'm saying? Like like Jenna say, when them, you know, them wheels, them rims are going to stop spinning one day. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be there. You know what I'm saying? They're going to be a, interrogating you and doing all that stuff that's gonna happen 
when you out there living that life. But a lot of them not not they don't they don't want that part of the life. Nobody wants that, but that's what you gotta stand up for. You know what I'm saying? When you when you when you choose choose that life, and now a lot of y'all out there not not standing up, and you know who you are. Sitting out here blending in with the real niggas out here. You know, you know who you are, and just be and bringing the whole bringing the whole thing down. But y'all know y'all lot. They don't have no business out here. Man, you know what I'm saying? And one thing, let me say one more thing. Ain't nobody made and built for this shit out here in the streets. Nobody. You know what I'm saying? I don't care how hard you claim you is or this and that. These streets ain't made for you. When you were born, you were born a king. You were born to do different things out here but besides causing destruction. I ain't telling to the people that's out here that's surviving because they done put us in a hell of a world out here to survive in. But, you know what I'm saying? It's about, it's about you really, your relationship with God and understanding God and know where your heart at at the end of the day. You yeah, ask them to work on the things that you that you trying to obtain as a person. But it's the, the preachers preach prosperity and wealth in your pockets. It's really prosperity and wealth within your soul. Because you can be a poor man, but be rich in the soul, you know? And so that money don't do anything. Money, money, money you know, can help out a lot of situations. I'm not gonna say that while we here on earth, but don't make that what you live and die for, money. Money, 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 because believe me, that'll tell you right now, there is a heaven and a hell. So, you know what I'm saying? You gotta know, you know what I'm saying? It's not about being perfect. It's about coming to God and letting God let, you know, work with you through the things that you're going through. So that's pretty much me and my conclusion right there. Keep God first, no matter what. All right, this is CMC Productions. <laughs> the conclusion of the interview with One Dog album is called Come as you are. All right, come. Little legend music, righteous warfare. That's it, right there, man. Love and salute to everybody. Conscious Minds record. Shout out to CMC. You know, we out here doing our thing. So you know, y'all stay home, stay gracious to God. I will meet you at the top. All right.